Welcome to day 9 of the 2024 Advent of Code. For today's challenge, we have our input given as a list of integers in a dense format, where each digit represents an input. The digits alternate between indicating the length of files and the length of free spaces. So for example, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 is a file, two blanks, a file of block 3, four blanks, and a file of length 5. Each file is given an index starting from 1, so for example, our example would give us this. We're going to move each block one at a time from the end of the disk to the leftmost free space until there are no remaining gaps. So for example, the process would look like this for our example case. We move the nine, then another nine, then these four eights go here and in these three. The blank, of course, does not get moved. And then these three sevens end up here so on and so forth, until we run out of blanks. So we can represent our disk as just an array, where each item represents the file ID or negative one for a blank. And so we can start the file ID at zero, and then we can say for i car in enumerate input, we only have one line of input, so today we can use the input function. And then we can say, x is the size of the file or the blank, and then if i is even, then we're creating a file, so it, the disk will gain the file ID repeated x times, and the file ID increments, otherwise the disk gains x blanks. So that's what it would forgot to load the input today. That's what our file now, that's what our disk now looks like. Now we just need to move each blank. So we can first calculate where the blanks are. This basically finds every index of negative one in the disk. And then we can say for each blank, if the um, there is the possibility of there being blanks at the end of the array. array. For example, after we move all of these, then we'll have a leftover negative one. Obviously, we don't want to move that into our blank as that wouldn't make sense. So we'll drop all blanks from the end of the disk. And then we will assign the last element of the disk to the current index. But there is one other case. If we've reach the end of the list, then we don't want to do this if we've already like exceeded the index. So if the length of the disk is no longer greater than i, then we break out of our loop. This can happen, for example, if, um, well, it won't happen in this example, but if we suppose we have an example of like zero dot 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 one, then after moving one here, our next blank would be here. Removing all of the trailing blanks, we'd get that. And so this index is no longer valid. Once that's no longer valid, it means that we've already condensed our disk past this blank and everything else was just blanks and we're fine now. And so now our disk is properly defragmented and compressed and we can grab the checksum, which is calculated by multiplying each block's position by its ID. In other words, we are taking each index and multiplying it by what's at the position for i, x in enumerate disk. And because we'll have no blanks left, we don't need to worry about the case where we skip blanks. And so that gives us our answer for part one. For part two, it appears that the disk has a lot more contiguous free space and the computer is running a lot more slowly. So maybe introducing all of that fragmentation was a bad idea. We know that the fragmentation here is caused by, for example, splitting up the files, which generally speaking is not a great idea. Like this six has been split up into three chunks. So instead what we're going to do now is we're going to start from the rightmost entire file and move it into the first available span, not moving each individual block. And our checksum is still calculated the same way. This time we need to worry about skipping blanks. 
we're going to get rid of basically everything. Instead of storing the files in a disk as an array, we're going to store it in a map and a list. The files will be a map from each file ID to its position and length, and the blanks will be an array of blanks of each position and length. And so here we will do files fid equals pause x, or position will start at zero as well. And then if it's a blank, we'll append position and x. And at the end of each iteration, the position will go to the right by x. Note that x can be zero. For example, we do have zeros in our input but only in the positions for blanks. If there is a zero length file provided as input, that raises two complications. First of all, it means that the blank to its left and right would actually be joined, which messes with our computation. Second of all, the problem statement does not specify if that would cause the file ID to go up by one or by two. And so we don't know how to handle this case because it's not made clear. So let's just say if X is equal to zero, we can just crash. That will do. And if the blank is length zero, then it doesn't make sense to track it as it doesn't really exist. So we'll only track blanks that are not empty. Or sorry, all blanks are empty. That's kind of the point. Only if the blank has length greater than zero. Now we will start going through each file and moving it into the first available blank. So currently FID is one greater than the largest file because we incremented it after assigning the file. So we will decrement it before going through the contents of each loop. Now what we will do is we will go through each blank. So for I, or rather let's get the file first. The current file is equal to the file with the ID according to the map. This consists of the start position and the size of the file. So we can say, position size equals files at index FID. And now we can go through each available blank. What I'm basically doing here is enumerate pairs each ID with the item itself, and the item is a pair representing the blank's start position and the length. If the start position is greater than or equal to the position of the file, that means that we've gone past. For example, when we were looking at the six to potentially move it, we'd go through this blank, then this blank, well, not really, this, 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 and then eventually we'd get to this blank, which would still be here from earlier, but it no longer applies, and so we will skip it. And not only will we skip it, but because we know that this blank is past the current file, it'll also be past every other file that we'll look at, so we no longer care about any other file. So we can say blanks equals blanks up to and not including the current one. That's what this index is for. And basically what this does is it just gets rid of all of the extraneous blanks that we no longer need. Otherwise, the condition for a file being able to fit into a blank is of course that its size is less than or equal to the length of the blank. If this is the case, then we can move the file. If we move a file, its start position becomes the start position of the blank. And of course the file size does not change when we move it. Now we have two situations. If the size is exactly equal to the length, then that means that this blank no longer exists. And so what we can do is we can delete the blank. So blank.pop i. Note that because we found a blank to move the file to, we're going to immediately break, which means that because both of these if statements break, we don't have to worry about these two running at the same time. So we don't need to worry about modifying blanks and then slicing it with an index. This would cause issues, but because these two cannot run in the same loop, it's perfectly fine. If the size is not equal to the length, that means that the size is strictly smaller than the length, meaning the blank still has some space left. And so we will modify the ith blank 
Its start position will move to the right by the size of the file, and its length will decrease by the size of the file. Looking now at the files we have, this is what we see. So let's see if this li lines up. 0 has length 2 at index 0. 9 has length 2 at index 2. 2 has length 1 at index 4. And 1 has length 3 at index 5. This all lines up. Everything else matches as well. And so now we just need to compute the checksum. So we can go through each file. Um, you could do this mathematically to avoid looping because this file, each file will now be contiguous, meaning you can add up its adjacent indices using Gaussian summation. But because the length of a file cannot exceed 9 due to our input being given digit by digit, that means that it really does not save any time. A loop of size 9 does not actually really mean much. And so we don't really need to care about efficiency here, but I will leave that as an exercise to the viewer if you want to figure out how to do this on one line in maximum efficiency. Otherwise, we will go through each file. So for ID, position, size, in, files.items, where dot items gets each entry in a map as a pair of its key and its value, then that means that when we iterate like this, this is the key, which is the file ID, and this is the value, which is a pair containing the start position of the file and its size. And so now we can just say for x in range from the start to the end, total plus equals the ID times the position. And so that gives us our position that gives us our answer for part two. Thank you for watching. I hope you learned something from this video and I hope you enjoyed. And I'll see you again next time.